What do you mean you can have a bank without bankers? What do you mean you can have, <laughs> you know, you can have an exchange without people? What, you know, ha, ha, you know, to them, this is alien concept because it is really the antithesis of the existing system. So they've never been comfortable. And then they use the ridiculous KYC AML thing, which really all KYC AML is to increase tax takes. So everyone has to declare everything. That's really what that's mm. about. It wasn't really about terrorism financing and stuff like that. It's really about they need to know where your money is at all times so you can't leave the system. And I think that's purposefully done. I think it's to create speed bumps. You know, the SEC kind of n often knows it's going to lose, but it does it to slow the whole industry down. The regulatory crackdown on cryptocurrency firms continues in the United States, posing potential threats to the industry. Regulatory agencies, like the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, are showing no signs of backing down from an exercise that threatens the growth and continued development of the crypto space in the US. Earlier this month, Uniswap Labs, the creator of Ethereum's largest decentralized trading platform, revealed that it received a Wells notice from the agency, suggesting an enforcement notice is imminent. Like Coinbase, Kraken, and other crypto-related firms that have been served similar notices in the past months, the SEC warned that Uniswap faces potential enforcement action for operating as an unregistered exchange and broker-dealer. In a blog announcing the Wells notice, the DeFi platform said, Taking into account the SEC's ongoing lawsuits against Coinbase and others, as well as their complete unwillingness to provide clarity or a path to registration to those operating lawfully within the US, we can only conclude that this is the latest political effort to target even the best actors building technology on blockchains. In a post made on X in response to the notice, Uniswap Labs founder Hayden Adams wrote, I'm not surprised, just annoyed, disappointed, and ready to fight. This fight will take years and may go all the way to the Supreme Court. Uniswap will not be the only crypto firm fighting the SEC's onslaught if it does come to that. According to recent reports, Ethereum developer Consensys has filed a lawsuit against the SEC in response to the regulator's unlawful seizure of authority over Ethereum. In the complaint filed against the SEC and its commissioners on Thursday, Consensys said it received a Wells notice from the SEC on April 10th. The notice indicated that the regulator intends to bring an enforcement action against the Ethereum developer for violating securities laws via its MetaMask wallet. Consensys has denied these charges and has pledged to fight the SEC's intention to classify Ether as a security. In a recent interview with Bankless, Real Vision founder and CEO Raul Pal discusses his views on the regulatory scene in the US, especially compared to more friendly countries like the UAE, and what the US government hopes to achieve by cracking down so hard on cryptocurrencies and crypto-related firms. Pal believes this is all a smokescreen to force investors to keep their money in the system even if they risk forcing developers to ditch the US in big numbers. As we bring you clips from the interview, please like and share this video and subscribe to the channel for more. Thanks and enjoy the video. You can see, you know, the almost every other central bank in the world of, of certain size is working on CBDCs. The US mm. won't because it's terrified of making the move. And the US has a history of this. And I wrote some threads about this in the past. So after the US left the gold standard, right, everybody now needed to exchange currencies with each other. And the US was like, well, we don't really want to be involved in this because they were worried about what was going to happen to the dollar. So mm. the UK started the foreign exchange markets, and it became the biggest market the world has ever seen. And the UK dominated that market ever since. Second was the second one was the offshore lending in dollars. So the US was really worried about dollar circulation outside of the US. Didn't know what, how to deal with it. Same thing with a reserve currency, we're on to f this up. So they just basically restricted um, US bank lending to various entities. So the UK started the euro dollar market, which is the offshore dollar market. And it siphoned through other global banks. It became the largest market the world has ever seen. The US missed all of those. So that's why LIBOR, the London Interbank Offered Rate, is the interest rate for the entire world, or was until they've just changed it to SOFA. Then it happened again in the very late 80s, where the derivative market in the US 
was basically the uh, Chicago Mercantile Exchange and the Chicago Board of Trade. But then the swaps market was developed, and it was an OTC market, and it required bank regulatory capital. The US regulators, to protect their own exchanges, said, you're going to rec- we're going to make it so hard for you to do that you're not able to. So the UK started the swaps market, which then became the whole deriv- OTC derivative market, which based out of the UK, which became a $1.4 quadrillion market. So the US has a history of doing this in its fear of screwing up. I get it. You're the incumbent. You've got a fear factor. The UK has a innate ability to arbitrage that. So they see the opportunity. That's why the City of London is so big. The UK stock market's small. It's because they took all of the business from the US. And what was very interesting is they see the US fumbling the ball yet again with crypto. And the UK stood up and said, we want to regulate this properly. We want to bring it here to the city. And we want to turn this into a huge market. And they've done this. This, will, this would be the fourth time. And you know, I, I remember speaking to the guys at Coinbase about this. I think it was Brett um, who runs their institutional side. I'm like, he grew up like me in the traditional finance industry. Back in the 90s, all of the main offices of all of the US banks was London. Hmm. Goldman's biggest office, London. JP Morgan's biggest office, London. Morgan Stanley's biggest office, London. All of them because of this. And slowly after Basel III regulations came in in the early 2000s, capital went back to the US because the US didn't um, put such string- stringent um, things onto the balance sheets of the banks. So money flew- flowed back. So it just feels that the opportunity here is this whole thing to happen all over again. One of the primary concerns of the consensus lawsuit is that the SEC is attempting a power grab over Ethereum. The development company said the purpose of the lawsuit is to curtail the regulator's overreach. The US Securities and Exchange Commission seeks to regulate ETH as a security. The complaint filed in a Texas court on Thursday reads, even though ETH bears none of the attributes of a security, and even though the SEC has previously told the world that ETH is not a security, and not within the SEC's statutory jurisdiction. The entire cryptocurrency industry is uniting to criticize the SEC and fight back against its overzealous regulation. According to Lex Sokolin, a former Consensus employee, it is the responsibility of every Web3 company to join the Ethereum developer and other companies fighting to stop regulatory overreach in the United States. During an interview with Coindesk, Lex said, Consensus is joining some of the leading companies in the space in a broad industry pushback against regulation by enforcement that is destructive to the future of the internet. This is the responsibility of every Web3 company that has the capital and expertise to navigate the US power structures. Let's get back to Pal's video as he shares what he believes is the real motive behind the SEC's continued onslaught against the cryptocurrency industry. When you're in a monopolistic power situation, Look at Google's inability. And I know the Google Web3 team well. They understand it. Yes, they do. They think it's great. But even the CTO of Google, as far as I'm aware, is a huge Web3 fan. But they can't do anything because it's going to disrupt their own business. The US is the incumbent monopoly of money, Mm. global money. And it's fearful of changing its system in case it loses control of the system. So this is why... They've kind of, if you think about it on this kind of spectrum, Coinbase good, Binance bad. Yeah. Right? Because right. Coinbase is within the walls. They've now given, they've blessed them with a monopoly, basically, and shut out Binance, which is the world's largest exchange, which is probably Chinese controlled uh, in as much as Coinbase is, is US controlled. And therein lies the separation, much like Chinese tech firms, US tech firms. This, so this game is being played out literally everywhere we see. Even the ETF for them is quite funny because the ETF they think of is keeping the money within the system. Hmm. Right, so it has to go through the intermediaries and the middlemen and all the checks and balances that they've got so they know where it goes. I actually think of it differently. I think it's a Trojan horse of crypto land put into <laughs> fiat world. 
because what you do is you give people a taste of what this is mm. and they will move out the risk curve. They always do. And they'll come into crypto land. So I think the SEC and the US government think that it's a victory to channel assets through the ETF. I think it's a victory for crypto land as a Trojan horse. Do you think that these types of handbrakes that US regulators are pulling right now, will that slow us down at all? No. Firstly, obviously, it's a global marketplace. Secondly, Bitcoin's got the seal of approval. ETH will get the seal of approval at some point. What you've now created is capital inflows. Now, this is not direct investment because it doesn't go directly into crypto land. It's like a trade deal. That money gets recycled in the crypto economy and out the risk curve. Profits get recycled into VC. VC creates new products, which create the new opportunities for the next cycle. So <clears throat> I don't think it slows it down because that still continues. You know, mum and pop in Ohio are not going to be using Uniswap to trade, you know, some hundredth token. So I don't think it really matters. The issue actually is, as you alluded to, is I just feel sorry for US innovators. Right. I mean, that's the, that's the issue and that they're, they're having to move. <laughs> you know, I'm off to Token 2049 uh, in Dubai shortly. Dubai is attracting a ton of talent. Singapore, mm. slow down a bit. Hong Kong, getting talent back again. Uh, Europe, are getting talent, bizarrely. Switzerland's got some great talent going on there in, um, in um, Crypto Valley. UK is getting talent and others are moving offshore elsewhere. So it's a shame. While US regulators and politicians like Senator Elizabeth Warren remain fixated on their anti-crypto tirade, other countries and regions are looking for ways to be more involved in and welcoming of the industry. Countries are using excess energy to mine Bitcoin to secure a place for future generations in the coming digital era. Yet, regulators and certain politicians seem completely fixated on doing otherwise. They see the freedom of the cryptocurrency industry as a direct challenge to the powers and their plans to enforce a CBDC. However, as Pal stated in his interview, nothing can stop the complete and eventual transition from TradFi to crypto land. Do you agree with Raul Pal's assessment of the regulatory environment in the United States, especially as regards the cryptocurrency industry? Please leave your comments and observations in the comment section below. Also, ensure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications for more videos like this. Thanks for watching.